Today I'm going to talk about some recent circulation modeling work we've done um, that's helped us to understand some fundamental processes that uh, happen on um, coral reefs. And in particular, we're focused on the behavior of uh, momentum jets that come out of reef passes, which uh, are come about from the interaction of topography and waves. Now, uh, my abstract says uh, we're looking at the behavior of, uh, of, of these reef jets under the influence of the Earth's rotation and stratification, but you know, from, as you guys know, when you submit the abstract, sometimes plans and experiments change between your actual presentations. So, so rather than that, um, we'll actually be looking at the effects of the Earth's rotation and uh, bottom friction on the effect of these reef pass, uh, reef pass jets. And um, what the main reason for that is I just, uh, to consider the most simple case is without density gradients in the vertical or in the horizontal. And uh, so it's a totally um, constant density case. And then we'll you know, add simplification later. So to, to motivate the talk, I wanted to you know, show this figure that illustrates how um, physical exchange mechanisms in the ocean interact with the physical structure of coral reefs and islands to um, make them the really amazing biodiverse ecosystems that they are. Um, there's nutrients coming off land that are being exchanged um, via you know, rivers and the, like reef past reef jets. And um, waves are going to affect this, and the presence of the island is going to enhance mixing in the wake on either side. So um, it's this you know, biologically built up structure that's simultaneously benefiting from flow patterns and um, also modifying them. And especially with anthropogenic global warming, we're particularly concerned about how heat builds up in these shallow systems that are more prone to warm up faster. So, so of the you know, currents and tides and waves and what have you and wind are going to act to distribute this heat throughout the system. And uh, so it's important to kind of get the fundamentals of the hydrodynamics right if we want to make any, any predictions about it. Um, so where we do a lot of research and field work to, is in the South Pacific. This is a map of Captain Cook's voyage, uh, voyages. And with the fateful one where there was a mutiny on the bounty is um, right where we do work, where I've annotated it in the black circle. So it's kind of in the, in the middle of nowhere. Um, and we work on an island right next to Tahiti called Morea. Um, here's a satellite photo of it, and I want to draw your attention to the, um, the shallow reef flats that um, are broken up between these um, incisions, which are the uh, lagoons and also where the reef jets are going to form, so kind of around the island. They're distributed roughly even. There's 12 on Morea, and it's about a 20-kilometer diameter island. Here's the, um, re the bottom topography or bathymetry for Maria that was derived from a LIDAR survey and a shipboard um, acoustic survey. And I've just put, uh, annotated the uh, location of the reef jets in green here. Uh, here's a schematic and another aerial view of the process that we're hoping to understand with some of this modeling work. And this is where, where waves are going to break on the reef crest and um, impart a lot of energy and momentum into the flow. And this is going to drive a um, current across the reef flat into the lagoon. And then to conserve mass, it's got to come out somewhere. And that's, it's going to come out at the, the incisions uh, where the reef jets come out right there. And, and, and what this modeling work shows is that um, you know, where, where a lot of this, where the coral is imparting a lot of friction to the waves, causing them to break and also slowing the flow down. It's actually going to have effect on, on the um, evolution and structure of the reef jets, which are much larger features. So really emphasizing that like, shallow water um, to kind of like uh, big scale connection is what is an aim of this talk. Um, so one drone video. This is uh, coming offshore to inshore. Um, so this is where remotely generated swell from thunderstorms and such. The waves were, are going to refract and shoal and uh, increase in amplitude up until the reef crest, where the physical structure of the coral reef is going to dissipate a lot of that energy. And then the rest of that energy is going to go into the mean flow. So um, hopefully it happens soon. There we go. Uh, w w uh, fun fact while this is going, uh, one way Polynesian navigators we're able to successfully navigate in their outrigger canoes is just by following the uh, um, perpendicular to the waves, because waves will always refract and hit land at some point. So that's another way they were able to find that. But here, here's the, um, a tremendous amount of energy being transformed over a very uh, a small gradient, which is a mo modeling challenge. Um, 
over this reef flat, and then that's going into the mean flow um, over the reef. And, and in this shallow section, notice the size of the coral obstacles relative to the depth of the water. So the, it's really imparting a significant amount of friction onto the flow that um, it, it's, um, we have to parameterize for that. It's not captured conventionally in, in the ocean model. So this brings me to the question of um, you know, what, what is, what's the effect of rotation? And I mean the Earth's rotation by that and uh, bottom friction on the behavior of the um, wave-driven reef jets. And, and the reason we're interested in rotation is because reefs are distributed over a range of latitudes. And actually, the, the strength of the Coriolis force is dependent on latitude. The Coriolis force is going to be z zero at the equator. So if you move in a straight line for a long time, you're not going to deflect your motion at all. But the higher, higher in latitude you go, your motion will be deflected um, progressively over shorter length scales. Um, so it's possible that reefs in some latitudes are going to actually have kind of different hydrodynamic properties due to this um, due to this force. And then, of course, uh, we're interested in bottom friction because it's a leading order effect on reefs and um, you know, healthy, healthy, complex structure reefs that have a lot of structure are going to have um, naturally more drag. And um, so it may have consequences for the kind of flow regimes that characterize those habitats. And especially you know, as reefs are face threats, as, as they degrade, it's possible that it, um, when they degrade, there's a biological effect, of course, but it might have a, some feedbacks and interaction with the flow field, as we talked about. There's a connection there. Um, so, so the hypothesis going into this is that you know, a healthy, rough reef imparting more bottom friction than, you know, will, act, will, reduce the, um, will increase the dissipation on waves and re reduce the speed of currents, and that the, the jets coming out will actually be affected more by Coriolis. Um, in, in the Navier-Stokes equations, if you, if you look at the ratio of the kind of nonlinear terms, which is the you know, um, fast, like, you know, short stuff and what kind of day-to-day -day what we see um, versus the Coriolis force, uh, it scales differently. So as you, as you decrease the velocity, the, um, all of a sudden the Coriolis parameter becomes like more and more an important part of the momentum dynamics um, because of that different scaling. And um, to investigate this process, we're going to use, uh, I use a coupled wave circulation numerical model called COEST. Um, and it's, it's really critical, as you saw in, in the images and um, other slides, that we have both the, the wave aspect of it um, talking to the um, hydrodynamics of it. And you know, in, in these ideal simulations, we're going to be changing the latitude, which affects the strength of the Coriolis force, and also the bottom friction through a parameter called Z0. Um, I also learned that Z0 is um, metallicity for astrophysics, but it's not that here. So here's the um, kind of idealized problem setup. I've created for myself to learn more about the problem. I've set up an annulus domain that's in polar coordinates. And, and this way, I don't have to mask out the middle of the island. Um, I kind of just set a closed boundary, con or boundary condition in the inner part of the donut. On the, and then on the outer part of the donut is where we're going to force the model domain with waves. Um, and that, you know, course in the grid spacing a bit. But I wanted to highlight the, that um, I'm able to, with this kind of configuration with a structured grid, I'm able to get a variable grid resolution in different parts of the grid I'm worried about. So I'm able to focus um, higher resolution around the parts like, where the waves are breaking and also where the jets are. And where the jets are, where you know, there's more velocity shear, and I want to resolve that as best as I can. So that, those are spaced out um, with 12 jets around the island and then um, azimuthally with the reef flap. So here's just the, the uh, bathymetry for it with the same grid, and it's a bit tough to tell, but um, there's, there's, little, there's the lagoon, which is in 20 meters deep, and the shallow reef flats, which are two meters deep, and then the offshore just drops very quickly down to 100 meters deep, and a, a very steep drop off is typical of these islands, and you can see the 12 um, reef fast jets kind of spaced around the domain. Here's kind of a lame visualization, but <laughs> this is just a side view of it to hopefully give you an idea of what's uh, what the domain I'm working with is. Um, and you know, it looks like, like a you know, Zorro hat or something with notches cut into it where the reef jets are. Oh, it spins too. That's great. So here, here's the uh, kinematics of the problem. So when the top left is the wave field, and we're forcing it on all sides of the outer boundary with, with waves propagating shoreward. And you'll see those waves are intense and all of a sudden um, attenuate very intensely over a small period where, right where that uh, reef crest is. Um, and, it's, it, and what that does is it's going to push water um, into the lagoon and makes it physically higher. And that's this top right is the eta is the free surface. 
and when the free surface is higher in the middle of the lagoon and lower offshore, that's the pressure gradient that's driving the reef jets. Um, and actually, when, you, when you're there in, in the lagoon and you look outwards at water level, sometimes you can't even see the waves breaking because the water really is a, is a few centimeters higher. And then the, below are the um, velocity and two components, uh, the radial and azimuthal component. I've split it into polar coordinates, I think, to a uh, bit of a more natural coordinate system for the problem. But uh, we, you know, I feel this plot demonstrates that flows coming in on the shallow reef flats and then coming out through these you know, long, you know, many kilometer uh, jet features. So I'm going to share some um, particle visualizations for this is now at zero degrees latitude, so Coriolis has no effect on the flow here. And you'll see there's no particular preference for where the deflection of the jet is going or um, where the eddies are propagating. I'll let it go again. But um, oh, I guess just the next slide. Uh, but compare that then against uh, where we take this island and put it to 45 degrees, which is a little outside the range I said earlier, but I just you know, wanted to, this was kind of initially just looking at um, you know, the physics at kind of the wide end of the parameter space. But here there's a clear deflection of, the, of these reef pass jets, especially at the end. You know, in the near field, they're not um, doing so much, but, um, but at the end there's this you know, clear counterclockwise um, rotation to these jet field, um, patterns, which is expected with uh, the sign of the Coriolis in the southern hemisphere. This is 45 degrees south. And, and, and these eddies are actually here. You can notice they're starting to detach and have a lack of their own. And um, here's a side to side comparison. And I think highlights it quite well. So, so because those eddy features caught my eye, I want to show some uh, relative vorticity fields, um, especially when you know, we're look, look interested in the uh, rate of change of velocity over space. So vorticity is a good way to do it. And now we're going to introduce the bottom friction as an independent variable. So here's like a high friction, uh, low Coriolis case, where the vorticity field is generally s smooth for most of the jets. And if we compare that against like a lower friction case, we're going to see, I mean, it's kind of what you'd expect, but it's, it's much more, there's much more vorticity in the system, and the jetties are much more likely to be shed and come off the jet and start to take on a life of their own. One thing I want you to notice is that the eddies are coming off the jet, but coming back, and not, it's possibly not just to reentrainment of the jet, but because we're forcing it with waves on all sides, the waves have a, a characteristic velocity with them, especially in the near surface, so it's possible these eddies are coming off, but then the waves are bringing them back, even in the case with no Coriolis. Here's, um, now a high friction uh, case, but at a 30 degrees south latitude. So now there's a clear deflection of the jets to the left, and these eddies that are starting to form are all propagating in a um, counterclockwise rotation. So you know, how, the, how these jets in different parts of the reef are, gonna be, are connected to each other are going to have this um, clockwise uh, directionality to it. And lastly, uh, here's the low friction case at high latitude, and th so there's, it's less bottom friction, so there's more vorticity, and, that, and these, these bigger features that are uh, forming at the uh, tip of the jet are starting to detach, and it's, that's expected at higher Reynolds numbers, and even starting to um, potentially interact with other jets themselves. Um, so just to summarize, um, I, think we, I think we showed, or I think these results do demonstrate the initial hypothesis that um, you know, decreasing the bottom friction has, has definitely a um, decided effect on the how, where the Coriolis force, or, or sorry, at one um, length scale offshore the Coriolis force starts to deflect these jets. But I think the questions that it's generated are um, a lot of the, it's possible that a lot of the transport and recirculation isn't necessarily just due to the mean curvature of the jets, but rather the evolution of these um, energetic features that are getting shed off of the jet. So, um, and, and furthermore, like the interaction of these, these eddying features with the uh, surface wave field, which might be uh, through a phenomenon called Stokes drift, is gonna, might be bringing these features closer to the reef. And you know, it's, qu it's quite interesting if, um, you know, the, these, if particles coming out, the, out of the reef jet might be re-entrained back on the reef and then go out another jet or back to the same one. And that has a lot of consequences for, you know, if, if there's, you know, for coral reef larva or, or pollution or what have you. So, so I'm very interested in, in um, especially the, 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 un, the unsteady part of the problem rather than just the mean problem.
So with, with future work, I would definitely just want to integrate the model for longer. I think starting to see these eddy jet interactions and um, it, you know, track particles for longer, I think will show, um, will, will be interesting. And, and it turns out that these kind of intermediate scales um, between um, the large scale and small scale, um, instant, there are certain signs of the, vort of the vorticity that are preferential. Do, uh, this is when this, it's kind of at this um, region where it's not totally in geostrophic balances where the earth or Coriolis force is dominant, and it's not totally at the other end where the inertial force is dominant. And it turns out that um, only a certain kind of sign of the rotation of the eddies, because, it's the, because the Coriolis force is stabilizing in one direction of the centripetal acceleration and destabilizing for another sign. So it's going to be, um, you know, an, a, 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 actually an anticyclonic rotation of the eddies that are preferential. So it, but I think we need more, you know, ensemble runs of longer times to... Um, look and see if we see that signal in the model. And of course, as I think for an entire next project entirely, introduce a, a density gradient, which is the real case on reefs where it's warmer on the surface and colder at depth. And that's actually going to confine vertical mixing and have consequences for the uh, momentum dynamics. And additionally to a, including vertical stratification, there's also going to be a horizontal stratification from the reef heating up in the shallows relative to the um, cooler offshore um, Waters and then and then at night the opposite happens and just this uh, where it cools down further or more in the shallow coral reef flats and deeper offshore and that's just because there's less thermal mass but I think that will be a, a separate project entirely and with that I'll um, conclude and if, happy to take any questions and, and of course I wanted to thank like Blue Waters um, for the support um, it's allowed me to take a lot of independence in looking at um, what I thought was interesting about some, some the circulation features on coral reefs and gave me the computation and like horsepower to do so. So it um, really means a lot. And of course, the Murray Coral Reef um, Long-Term Ecological Research Station, which um, supports our work down in Murray, that motivated a lot of this work. So uh, thank you. <laughs>